I know it sounds bad, but I mean, I know the identities that come up in calculus, right? So, and I can come up with some of the other ones, but you know, the popular ones. So, so this bad boy here, um, this is a nice one. This is a nice, nice little, uh, it looks good. Right? 10 squared of x plus y. What? You. Yeah, we're gonna let you. Yeah, it's obvious. This screams, right? Substitution, right? I mean, if you see something, if you see something like this on the test, what's your u gonna be? Uh, yeah, what's under the radical? I mean, so it's really obvious, right? So again, this is another. It's a mercy, not mercy problem, but it's another. It's a free, it's a freebie, freebie problem. Uh, all right, so let's try this. I haven't done this in a long time. In a year. I haven't done one of these since last year, so it should be interesting. I haven't even looked up my notes. U equals x plus y. I know, it's scary. All right, and then I guess we have to compute uh, uh, the derivative with respect to x, right? So it doesn't say, but I guess we should try it. So, so du dx. And what, what's, what's the derivative of x with respect to x? So it's one. And then what would, what would the derivative of y with respect to x be? One. One. You're thinking of partial derivatives. <laughs> oh, your mind is on the uh, on the del. Right? This is d not del. <laughs> You're thinking del f del x. Yeah. Del's way cooler, right? But we got to stick with the regular English lowercase d's. So okay. Um, and then I guess we have to make a full substitution here. So obviously this is going to be u. But here we have dy dx, so we can solve this for dy dx by subtracting one, right? Yeah. So it's pretty self-explanatory. I haven't done this in a year, and you see that it makes sense. It's not, it's not that bad. So dy dx is du dx minus one. And then we should plug it in, and then it should work, it should, it should work out. These are actually very, 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 very easy. We could have done this the first day, right? We could have done this after we did second rule if we wanted to, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just next time, all right? So, or not. Um, so, so dy dx is du, du dx minus 1, and this is equal to 10 squared of u. Okay. And um, this is separable. Oh, we can add the 1. So du dx is equal to 1 plus 10 squared of u. What's, what's 1 plus 10 squared? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the secant function squared. This is du dx. 1 plus 10 squared is secant squared of u. And if you don't know that, it's okay. Let me show you something. I mean, you can fail trig and know one thing. Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to what? 1. 1. Yeah, everybody knows that, right? Like, and that's like the identity. And so if you say, okay, how do I get a, t how would you get a tan squared from this? What do you divide everything by? Cosine. Cosine, Cosine squared. This is really sloppy. But just... And then one over cosine is secant squared. secant squared x. See, very powerful stuff. From sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, the world follows. You can do so much with that identity. Um, and now we're ready to, um, oh, we got to separate it, don't we? Yeah. We have to divide by what? Yes. Secant squared. I'm going to come back over here. To divide by secant squared, so we get, so we get du over secant squared of u equals dx. But wait a minute, the secant function is 1 over what? Cosine. So 1 over secant squared is going to be cosine squared. So now we've eliminated the, the nasty secant function. And, and now, when we integrate this, we can use an identity, right? We can use an identity. Any, any questions up to here? Anything hazy with the process? So you call it u, you find the u dx, right? So it's pretty straightforward. Um, you solve for dy dx because you want, you, want, you want to have your du dx everywhere. Um, you write it down. You have to separate it, so you add the 1, right? And then 1 plus 10 squared is secant squared. Uh, and then you divide by the secant function squared, and you get this. But you know that secant is 1 over cosine, um, so 1 over secant squared is cosine squared. Okay? Uh, there's an identity here, right? This is, uh, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's 1 plus cosine of 2u over 2. So I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to write it as 1 half plus 1 half cosine 2u du, 
and then this is just going to be x plus, I'll just go ahead and put the c there. Okay. Right, so that's an identity. That's an identity. That's, that's a really important identity. In fact, like in the trig book, like if you open like the pre-calc trig book we use here, like it doesn't have this in like written in this form anywhere in the book. Like anywhere in the book. Why? I have no idea. <laughs> it's written like in another way. Like it's not written in the way you use it in calculus. Why? I don't know. I didn't write the book. Anything hazy up to here? And then when you integrate this, you just get what? One half u. What's a function whose derivative is cosine? Sine. Sine. So this is going to be uh, one, one, one fourth, because you're dividing by two, right? Uh, sine, oh wow, two u equals x plus c. And we're not done, right? We're almost there. What's the very last thing we have to do? The very last thing. Put u back in. Put u back in. Good, Philip. So we just replace u with um, x plus y. Thanks. So we're going to replace u with x plus y. So replacing u with x plus y, we get 1 half um, x plus y uh, plus 1 fourth sine of 2 times x plus y uh, equals x plus c. Wow. So not, not too bad uh, compared to the Bernoullis. It's a lot easier.